Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Matt and welcome to Downshift. Today I am with the biggest little SUV in America. This car has undergone some serious changes for this generation, some of which are included in the trunk. We'll get to that a little bit later. But for now, the Volkswagen Tiguan. In the Volkswagen Tiguan. This car is designed on Volkswagen's new MQB platform that it shares with the Atlas, Golf, and now the Jetta. With the addition of this MQB platform, Volkswagen has added seven and a half inches to the wheelbase and 11 inches overall. Also, this car is three inches wider than the previous generation, so it's quite a bit bigger just in every measurement. And that's why they can get away uh, justifying fitting a third seat in here. Now, this car does come with an optional third row seat. This tester does not have it. So with the increased size, you can obviously imagine that it's uh, got a lot more cargo capacity and it does. Uh, 73 and a half feet with all the seats down. Uh, to give you some context, the Mazda CX-5 has about 60 cubic feet. Uh, it does lose out to the CRV by like a foot and a half. Um, so you're really not noticing it. This is what I would consider uh, segment leading or competing for the lead in the segment. Um, as I said, the third row seat is optional. It's a $500 option on all wheel drives. It's standard on front wheel drives. That's what the, the deal is here on this one. This tester is an SE with four wheel drive, uh, not optioned with the rear seat. All front wheel drive uh, cars come with the, the third row seat as standard. So with regards to the third row, this, this Volkswagen Tiguan, the Nissan Rogue, and the Mitsubishi Outlander are the only cars in the segment to offer a third row seat. It's not necessarily what you would call inhabitable in the rear seat. You're gonna to wanna to stick small, small children back there, um, but it's nice to have the option too. Uh, if you're having any more than, than five people in the car, there's a chance that two or three of them are kids anyway, so I think you'll be fine. SEL trims do come with adaptive front LED headlights. Uh, all trims come standard with LED light barb, uh, at the bottom of the headlight casing. However, the SEL has full <coughs> LED headlights. Um, and when I say adaptive, that essentially means that uh, as you turn, and especially at night, the, the headlights will rotate and swivel in the direction that you're turning. Uh, additionally, you will have auto high beams as well. My tester has 17 inch alloy wheels. Alloy wheels are standard on all trims. Uh, to get the 19 inch alloy wheels, you're gonna go with the SEL and SEL premium trims. The R-Line will be equipped with 20 inch wheels that look pretty snazzy. Another thing that lends to this car feeling so massive on the inside is the panoramic sunroof. I mean, you can see it in the shot right now. It's huge. It goes all the way back behind the, the rear seat's headrest. It really makes the cabin feel a lot more open and airy. So this car is, of course, equipped with Volkswagen Smart Key Access. It means you never have to take your key out of your pocket. That's always one of my favorite features. Uh, I hate putting my key in my pocket, taking it out, putting it in. Although with the Smart Key Access and the push button start, you still get Volkswagen's little switchblade uh, key fob, which I absolutely love that they kept. Uh, it's, it's classic. It's, it's just the coolest thing ever. It's fun to play with. Um, additionally, this car comes with the 12.3 inch infotainment screen. It's brand new uh, for this generation, it's fantastic. It's completely responsive, push, um, swipe, pinch to zoom, uh, everything like that is instantaneous. The, the graphics look great on the nav screen. It's, it's a wonderful little infotainment system. Uh, on SEL trims and up, you will get an optional um, Volkswagen digital cockpit, which essentially takes the gauge cluster, uh, makes it all one screen and completely configurable up to three, I believe, driver modes. Um, so you can personalize it exactly how you like it um, for up to three people that drive this car. So SEL trims on this Tiguan are equipped with an extremely robust safety suite. Um, things on the safety suite include 360 camera, park assist, um, automatic emergency braking and forward collision mitigation, uh, lane keep assist, adaptive cruise, rear pedestrian detection, and uh, automatic high beams, like I said earlier, blind spot monitoring, and rear traffic cross alert. That's pretty, that's pretty serious. Uh, a lot of cars in the segment offer some of these safety features, but not all of those. 
So really well done on Volkswagen's part by equipping this car really, really thoroughly. Another nice feature is three level heated seats. There are no cooled seats on this car, no matter what trim you get, but three level heated seats are really nice. Uh, additionally on SEL trims, you can get a heated steering wheel as well. One gripe I have is the turning radius on this thing. It's, it's not great. I know this is Volkswagen's MQB platform and it's nice, but they've, they've made it so long uh, that it just, it, you, can't, you can't do a full U-turn in the street. So also a nice feature for the rear seats, of course, is uh, dual climate control vents, a USB as well as a 12 volt uh, outlet charger. Um, just nice. The best thing about the back seat, honestly, is just the space. I had so much room back there. Uh, the panoramic uh, sunroof made me feel completely, you know, completely fine and, you know, able to stretch out. There was no claustrophobia at all. Really, really nice. Uh, one of my favorite things about this car is the terrain selection. So you can choose between snow, uh, normal on-road, off-road, or custom off-road. The cool thing about the, the custom off-road is you can completely set everything that you want, like hill descent and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, additionally, on the custom normal on-road driving, you can also set a custom climate control. So you can set your climate control to eco, which of course will just pretty much turn off your AC uh, to improve fuel economy, which is kind of strange, but hey, whatever works. I do want to take a second to talk about the refinement of this car. Uh, it really is nice in terms of cabin refinement. <clears throat> the whole dash is soft touch, squishy. Uh, the leather is really nice and supple. Um, it's, it's really a clean layout. It's nothing that's gonna dazzle you. It's nothing like overly glamorous or sexy in your face, but you do get really nice features in here and really nice kind of build materials. Um, I really love the flat bottom steering wheel on this. You really don't need it because this car is not fast at, at all, but it is, it is kind of cool. Like I said, this car is not super fast, but it's, it's about practicality and it definitely accomplishes that with all this extra space. And I think, you know, it just, the new sight lines of this car, it's, it's a lot more boxy than the previous and it's a lot more boxy and, and trucky, like original, I don't, I don't want to say GP, but it's got those kind of geometric dimensions to it that not a lot of cars in the segment have. You know, you get the Nissan with the really aggressive angles in it, um, and then you get the, the CRV with all sorts of cutouts and, and leafs to it. But this car just, it looks, this truck, I should say, looks like a truck. It looks like it's muscular, uh, it's ready to go off-road or whatever. Um, so I, I like the way that this car looks in comparison to the rest of the segment. Now let's talk about the driving dynamics of this car. There is one engine choice. You get the two liter turbo uh, inline four cylinder that Volkswagen gives you with 184 horsepower. Not a whole lot. My 08 Passat has the same power plant and gets 200 horsepower. However, it also gets 200 pound feet of torque. Whereas this Tiguan gets 221 pound feet. That's what you're gonna want in a car like this. You're gonna want that torque, that low end grunt to get you up to speed. Now with the turbo, you do notice it. You put it in sport and it does lag a little bit. Um, it's not anything that I would say is obnoxious, but it, it, you definitely do notice it. Although you're putting sport mode on in a small SUV, you really don't, you really don't need to be going that fast anyway. This is of course also equipped with Volkswagen's eight speed Tiptronic automatic transmission. Uh, this will give you 21 MPG in the city and 27 on the highway um, for, for all wheel drive models, which is below standard in the segment. However, this thing, we're talking about this thing being huge, right? It's 4,000 pounds to equip all this space and all this cavernous palatial interior. You know, the weight has to come somewhere. So that's why you're gonna get these lower fuel economy numbers. And that's probably why <laughs> The custom, uh, the custom drive selection lets you turn off climate control to save fuel. But overall, this thing is extremely comfortable. It's extremely well finished, well thought out. It's, it's not offensive to look at. It's really nice and well, well organized. Um, I personally like the, the steering wheels of these new, VM, or new VWs. Uh, the infotainment screen is huge, massive, and responsive. Um, it's, it's wonderful. One gripe I do have about it is it is more expensive than the rest of the segment. Um, just because Volkswagen's gone through a lot of work and effort into bringing you, you know, an, a segment leading vehicle in terms of size and practicality. Um, it's got a lot of new technology in it and their new infotainment system, especially in higher trims, you get the Audi, Audi digital cockpit, um, Audi-esque, I should say. It's, it's Volkswagen now. Um, <clears throat> 
but you get a lot of goodies with this car. So that's, that's reflective in the price tag. Um, so I would not say that it's not worth it. I would absolutely say this is definitely worth, worth a look. Uh, I've driven a few of these small SUVs in the segment, and this is probably one of my more favorite ones just because it has that kind of trucky feel. You're high up, you have a command of the road. Uh, it feels like it's a more capable SUV rather than just you know a taller sedan. So there it is guys, I really like this car. Uh, the thing that I like most about it is the kind of the truckiness to it, the dimensional aspects, it's kind of boxy. Uh, it's more classic SUV. I really like that feature about it. It is a little bit more expensive than the rest of the segment, uh, but that's because you're getting a lot more space, a lot more interior volume, a lot more added practicality with things like that. You got a bunch of different drive modes, a lot of customization, a whole lot of new technology. The infotainment system is completely revamped. It's very, very uh, segment leading in terms of the, the technology. Uh, additionally, you know, you've got things in the higher trims such as the Volkswagen digital cockpit. Uh, that's still one of the coolest things that I've seen in the industry, um, bar none. So I really do think this car makes a serious value proposition. Uh, a bottle, a, a base S model starts at about uh, 25 grand. And um, if you add a thousand or one thousand three hundred dollars for all-wheel drive, you can get your SEL Premium, the top trim, optioned up with all-wheel drive and everything, for about thirty-six uh, thirty-six thousand two hundred fifty dollars. That is a lot, but you're getting a lot of car along with that. So with that, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Um, go check out my friends at Hall Volkswagen in Brookfield, Wisconsin. They have a bunch of these Tiguans out on their lot in their inventory right now. Uh, they've taken fantastic care of me and continue to do so with each vehicle I shoot of theirs, and they will take fantastic care of you. So go check them out uh, if you're ever in the Milwaukee area and you're looking for a Volkswagen. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, that is the Volkswagen Tiguan. This car has undergone serious updates for this generation. Um, all of the stuff that you're getting now is added practicality, added utility, so much more space. The addition of the third row is huge. So if you really enjoyed this, I hope you really enjoyed this review. Uh, and I hope this helps make your decision if you're looking for a small SUV. Um, so if you like this, please comment, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next time.